Raku, a ceramic art form, has its roots in the 400-year-old Zen tea ceremony, Cha no Yu. In the 1500s, the son of a Korean tile maker migrated to Kyoto, Japan, where he was commissioned to make vessels for the tea ceremony. His work was favored among the masters, and after his death, he was honored with a gold seal bearing the ideograph, Raku, meaning enjoyment, contentment, pleasure, and happiness. Raku ware is created according to the laws of nature, the perfect within the imperfect. The thick porous clay body enables a bowl of hot tea to be held comfortably in the hands. The tea masters have always preferred its simple form and its organic surface texture. When creating rockaware, it is necessary that the artist be true to himself. Practicing the Zen concepts of harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility, the Raku artist creates a symbol that radiates his spirit and life. The intimacy of the Raku process makes it an appealing art form to Eastern and Western parters alike. Just as tea is shared in the ceremonial vessel, Raku artists can find spiritual growth by sharing the experience of clay. Wedging is the first process in creating any object from clay. It aligns the molecules and removes the air bubbles. Wedging also allows one to clear one's mind of all things and focus only on the clay. The greatest importance to me in creating any tea bowl is to put my most intimate feelings in the surface of the bowl itself and also to have the pleasure in doing it. These feelings are in constant change, just as life is. The interior of a tea bowl is like a little world to me. It is the part of the bowl that is viewed the most when I am using it. I'm not perfect, so my bowls are not perfect. When I throw tea bowls, I usually throw 17 of them. Then I'll sit down and look at them, and usually I'll throw back or toss back at least half of them. Sometimes I'll only keep one. When a piece has been completely formed, it is set aside to air dry and kiln fired to a temperature sufficient to harden but not mature the clay body. The piece is now called bisqueware. Hawaii's first lady, Jean Ariyoshi, selects two tea bowls for the governor and herself while she shares her feelings about Raku. Raku has always fascinated me. It's, it's such, a, such an earthy uh, process and uh, and of course, the tea bowl has also always fascinated me. Chardo has been something very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And so I really enjoy doing this. Um, I think both clay and uh, chardo, the way of tea, really is something very beautiful. And you, you capture this beauty uh, with chardo spiritually forever mm -hmm. and with clay physically forever. Glaze is a paint-like substance containing some of the same elements as clay. It is applied to the bisqueware by brushing, pouring, dipping, or spraying. During the firing process, glazes bond to the ceramic piece, adding strength and beauty. Even for the experienced artist with a working knowledge of glazes, the excitement of Raku is in the spontaneity of the firing and reduction processes, where the unexpected can always happen. Hawaii Craftsman's Raku Ho'olaulea is an annual weekend event held at Kualoa Regional Park on Oahu's windward coast. 
Ho'olaulea means a gathering, and each summer Raku Ho'olaulea brings together island potters in a festive Hawaiian atmosphere of learning and sharing. Nineteen eighty three's gathering was the largest yet in its seven year history, witnessing over five hundred participants in two days. Nine different groups representing 175 potters and their families transported their own ceramics, equipment, food, and shelter to the park. To accommodate a wide variety of firing techniques, potters furnished gas kilns, hand-built brick kilns, glass-blowing furnaces, wood pit fires, and a specially designed event chamber. Smoke rising into the peaceful koolaus gave the beach setting a somewhat spiritual aura. Though each group fired according to their own needs, all shared a small campsite and a common interest. The idea for the first ho'olaulea belonged to island-born potter David Kuraoka and his colleague Joe Holly. Each year, mainland artist who is well known for raku firing is invited to lead a workshop. This year, David and Joe were invited to return as guest artists for the seventh annual Ho'olaulea. Well, the best thing here is the weather and the, the water so close, and it's just geological, so it's difficult to. Um, the, your, te your technology has greatly improved over the, over the years. Uh, there's a lot more experimental kilns, experimental, experimental type of firings going on. It's um, a lot more variety and a lot more exciting. I think you coined the, the phrase uh, once in California, David, said, uh, this is flash fire. This has a really uh, uh, an extension on, on what we feel about this event. The event is to bring uh, uh, people together, right. bring, bring, bring a moment together where people can uh, sense this experience of, of being on the beach, being together, feeling that communion. And I think there's one thing that comes together about it, and that's communion. The, the, the neat, one of the neat things, like, uh, as Joe was saying, that, that all these individual groups has a, have a chance of getting together once a year. Usually it's at art openings, everybody's dressed up, feeling very stuffy. It doesn't quite work, but this way, when we work together, play together, it really makes some sense, or it makes, some, it makes a process have mo much more meaning, much more Hawaiian style. Yeah. Love it. You know, the, one of the neatest things about this whole event is to wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Raku glaze firing is a uniquely exciting event, particularly on one of Hawaii's splendid beaches. The speed of the firing, the flames, and the smoke all suggest the character of a happening. Potters must carefully preheat their glazed pieces to conform them to the rigors of tremendously hot kilns. Vessels are often placed atop ignited kilns to dry preparing them for this voyage into the heating chamber. Once pieces are carefully positioned inside the kiln, heat is gradually increased under the potter's watchful eye. The unique Raku kilns allow the artist a spectacular view of the clay forms as they reach incandescent temperatures, usually within 20 minutes. While the glaze melts, he may wait for a particular quality of fusion to appear, or simply improvise, allowing nature to take its course. When the desired effect is achieved, the heating is stopped. Pieces glow briefly with a life of their own as they're removed and quickly placed into reduction chambers, which are sand pits or metal containers filled with organic material. As the combustibles ignite, the chamber is covered cutting off the oxygen supply to the fuel. The smoldering atmosphere unites with the chemicals in the molten glaze. Cooling with water or air freezes this luster into the glaze, often causing the surface to crackle. The spontaneous results of this flash fire are impossible to reproduce, which is just a part of the thrill and mystery of Raku. Centuries ago, the first potter probably fired his clay vessels in a pit fueled by wood or dung. 
This primitive method of firing is still used by many present-day artists and was a prominent feature of this year's Raku gathering. A dedicated crew took charge of this grand project, digging a large sand pit similar to our Hawaiian emu. It would be filled with the unglazed artwork of anyone wishing to participate. Organic fuels and chemicals were sprinkled among the carefully arranged ceramics to embellish them with unpredictable color combinations. With over 100 pieces added, it easily qualified as the weekend's largest single firing. Once the fire is started, fate has its way with the contents of the pit. It blazes hypnotically, attracting anxious potters and curious onlookers. When the last embers die around dawn, pieces will be meticulously removed in the process that resembles unearthing an ancient excavation. For the first time, the general public shared in a hands-on Raku experience. Following an old Japanese tradition, guests were invited to choose and glaze a bisque tea bowl and have an experienced potter fire it for them. They would return home with a new appreciation for the Raku process and a personal ceramic memento of the occasion. Juror David Kuroka selected the best example of Raku glazing from among the bowls. The lucky public artist received an award and was granted the honor of having her tea bowl exhibited with those of seasoned Raku artists. That's the winner! Woo! The art of glassmaking shares a common heritage with that of clay. Using his unique portable gas furnace, UH graduate student Rick Mills demonstrated glass blowing throughout the festival. Rick fascinated viewers by manipulating melted glass into numerous expressive forms. Last year I came out here for three days of pure hell and I said, I ain't never gonna rock you again, I hate it. And then I talked to one of the other graduate students and we got the idea that we'd make a portable glass furnace. And so we spent three days in solid rain last year out here. No sleep, wet clothes, the whole nine yards, all the way down. And I wanna do something I enjoyed more than just rock you. And it's not so much the pieces you make in glass, it's the activity. And you're just making the kiln and the actual working of the glass. It's, it's real methodical and it's almost like therapy, really. It's more the, the process of just being out here and surrounded by all this and all this activity. It really makes it a lot more special than anything you'll probably make out of glass out here. There is a similarity in the way that materials are handled during glass making and raku firing. Raku artists with backgrounds in other disciplines can bring a wonderful degree of individuality to their clay forms. The great diversity of expression at this year's Ho'olaulea was sure to inspire even the most seasoned potter.
properly commemorate this year's Ho'olaulea, a very special event piece was conceived and executed by ceramic artist Susan Amoy. Susan best explains this highly symbolic work. Isolate the two, like traditionally pottery has been made or ceramics has been made and then put inside a kiln and then taken outside of the kiln and then put on display. And it doesn't take into account the process of the fire and the building and the materials and the technology that went into mm -hmm. the piece. And I think all of that is just as important. It's kind of a symbol of, of life for me. It's, it's, it's a coliseum, it's, it's geometry, it's time. So there's this clash of science, and on the other hand, you know, science can't control everything. I mean, we, here we have spontaneity. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to do both and capture both. And I, that's why I like clay. It's just this process of, of going from one stage to another stage. It's, it's just a spiritual thing. I, I'm sorry, I'm getting old. Once the loading is completed, Susan will heat the chamber and continue firing into the night. At midnight, chemicals will be added that will conjure eerie phosphorescent lights within the bowels of the sculpture. The effects of these swirling vapors will be recorded as temperature patterns in the carbonized clay. It's a, it's a participation piece and it's a public piece and I'd like people to be included in, in the process and the materials that makes the art that they see. Um, it's really a record of all of that. A vessel, a kiln, a ritual deeply embodied in ceramic form. At night, Susan Amoy's work becomes a powerful statement articulated in clay. For the Raku artists, nothing quite rivals the experience of flash firing on a tropical beach at night. One can actually sense the power of the glowing kilns as they hum in the cool night air. As if by primitive instinct, potters are drawn toward their nourishing warmth and light. Without the usual distractions, one can focus more clearly on one's work so that each firing becomes an adventure. Oh my God, look at that.
By the festival's end, Raku artists had expended thousands of pounds of fuel and immeasurable creative energy. Each artist had his own reasons for participating, but all shared the rewards of being close neighbors in this temporary artistic community. The courtyard of Honolulu Hale was later the scene of a juried Raku exhibition sponsored by the Hawaii Craftsman and the Mayor's Culture and Arts Office. This climactic event showcase the best efforts of those who took part in the beach ho'olaulea and sought to raise public awareness as to the beauty and versatility of raku. Special opening night activities included presentation of awards by Mayor Anderson, an authentic Chano Yu tea ceremony, a display of Governor and Mrs. Ariyoshi's tea bowls, and a special Raku firing on the steps of City Hall. The show was a truly remarkable assortment of ceramics, ranging from traditional tea bowls to contemporary abstract sculptures. The techniques of Raku have changed tremendously since tea masters first used Raku ware and will continue to evolve as artists explore their creativity. As viewers admired these works, many were able to relive the experience of that memorable weekend. a certain spirituality that accompanies working with clay. Perhaps by manipulating the bonds of earth and fire, the potter seeks to come to terms with his existence. When practiced respectfully, the art of Raku provides a satisfaction of knowing one's place in nature.
for information regarding this year's Raku Ho'olaulea or other community events sponsored by Hawaii Craftsmen, write to Hawaii Craftsmen, Post Office Box 22145, Honolulu, Hawaii 96822. Raku Ho'olaulea 84 will feature primitive firing techniques of the Tewa Indians as part of the festival at Kualoa Beach Park, June 23rd and 24th. The general public is invited to share the Raku experience on Saturday, June 23rd.